Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Facebook. My name is Steve Lucher, and I work on the Relay team at, uh, at Facebook. And this talk is called Zero to GraphQL in 30 Minutes. Something that I hear time and time again from conference attendees and React developers is that they would love to get started and try all of the stuff that Greg just showed you. They want to get started with GraphQL, but they know that in order to do so, they're going to be able to have to vend their data through a GraphQL endpoint. And frankly, making the investment in a GraphQL endpoint atop their existing infrastructure is kind of a barrier to adoption, right? And I'm sure some of you feel this here. So what I'd like to do today is I would like to do a demonstration of just how minimal an investment you can make to stand up a GraphQL endpoint atop your existing infrastructure without having to rewrite any of your data layer whatsoever. And I'm going to do so by sort of skimming off the top of uh, you know, the web frameworks du jour. I'm going to try Django for Python developers. I'm going to try Rails for Ruby developers. And then we're going to do a JavaScript example in Node for uh, you know, whatever kind of uh, service-oriented architecture that you can think of. So GraphQL, zero to GraphQL in 30 minutes. This is a time trial. So we better get started, all right? So put yourself in the shoes of your average Python developer. You're developing a large Django app. And maybe your Django app does something like this. It exposes a, uh, you know, a person model. And you have a people endpoint. And this people endpoint vends you some people. I can say people slash one to get the person with, uh, with ID one. And I have some properties on a person. First name, last name, email, username. I also have an association to some other people through friendships. Here I have two friends. Now, let's say that I was charged with building a user interface where I had to render a list of this person's friends with the first name and email of each one of the friends. I do not have enough data here to be able to do that. All I have is a URL where I can fetch more information about friends two and three. So the temptation might be to sort of twiddle with the URL and add like an include friend details, you know, email, first name kind of thing, right? Or maybe the, there's the temptation to you know, break off a new endpoint, like uh, people with friend details, you know, slash one or something like that. Some of you are chuckling because you know that as time goes on, this can lead to an explosion of custom endpoints that we'd rather stay away from. Wouldn't it be awesome if instead we could create a query for a person with the ID 1? And if I could ask for some uh, fields on it that I am interested in, like uh, a first name and a last name and an email address and a username, and if I could dive into their friends and pick only the first name and email from the friends, wouldn't it be awesome if I could execute a query that looked like this and get a response that has exactly the same shape as the query that I just made with only the fields that I requested, with no risk of overfetching data that I'm not going to use, and no risk of underfetching for data that I definitely need to render in my user interface. Well, as most of you can probably guess, what you're looking at on screen is GraphQL. And I'm going to show you how to, <laughs> hey, hey, I didn't write it. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to stand up a GraphQL endpoint in this Django app right now. All right, so no cheating. Um, let's. Go all the way back, git checkout master. We're going to start from a blank slate. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Python installer, pip install, and I'm going to install the excellent graphene library with the Django extensions. Uh, I'm also going to install Django graphical. Graphical is the graphical interface to browse a GraphQL endpoint that you just saw in the browser. All right. So now with those things installed, let's write some Python code. So, a schema, um, the, your job as a client dev is to uh, export a schema that describes your data universe. And I'm going to do it with graphene. I'm going to import graphene, and I'm going to export one of these schema things. Graphene is a set of helper methods that help me uh, create a schema. Every great schema starts with a root field called query that's of query type. So what's in a query type? A query type 
is a subclass of uh, an object type. Object type has a name, an optional description, and then it's going to have some fields. Let's just do the hello world for now. Let's say I want a field called hello, and it's going to be of type string. Now, I'm going to have to write a Python method that returns me this mythical string, and I'm going to do it like so. Resolve uh, hello. It's going to take in a root, some optional arguments, and some info, some context about the request. This might be the logged in user or you know, context about the HTTP request. And now, on this line, it's my job to do whatever I want. Anything that's available in Django, Python, so long as I return a string. I'm going to cop out, and I'm just going to return the string world. All right, let's see how we did. I'm going to jump back into the browser. I'm going to refresher and say query. Now I have this hello field that's available. And if I execute this query, the response was the return value of that resolver, world. All right, so here's what I really want. What I really want is I want a person field. And I want it to be a field of type person type. And I want it to take an argument that's a string. And I want this, uh, now I'm going to have to do some work to resolve this. So if I want to resolve a person from the root, get some args and some optional info, now I'm going to have to do some work that returns a person. Anyone who's worked with Django will recognize the following API. If I have a, mo a person model, I can use this API, object get, to get a person by their primary ID. And the ID I can pull right out of args, like so. From my people app, the models, import uh, that person model, and I should be good to go. Person is going to pull ID out of args, and it's going to use the Django API to read it out of the database. All right, this is no good unless I tell it what a person type is. So let's do it. Person type is also a subclass of the object type. Has a name and an optional description and some fields. First field I want to create is the first name field, which is a graphene string. All right. What do you think? Do I have enough here in terms of my schema description? Let's jump into the browser and check. All right, so on my query, I now have a person field at the root, which accepts an ID argument, which I can pass the string one. And on that person, it looks like there's a first name field exposed. And when I hit run, it pulls that straight out of the database through the Django model. You didn't change your data layer whatsoever. And now you stood up a, gra a GraphQL endpoint in a Django app. Let's keep going. We have first name, we have last name, we have email, username, and ID. And then now we're going to have to deal with this friends association. I want to create a friends field, which is fundamentally a list of stuff. And it's a list of person types. And in Graphene, I can just write self to refer to you know, the present type. Now I'm going to need a little bit of help to resolve um, friends. Uh, given that I start from a person at this node with some optional args and info that I don't need to use, um, how am I going to return their friends? Again, the Django model API, if I, uh, if, I, uh, if I query person friends, that gives me an association object that describes the association between a person and their friends. And then if I call the all accessor, that's going to turn it into a numerable list of friends that I can return through, through the resolver. So, with any luck, I now should be able to query all of these other fields, like so. And I should be able to dive into the friends association, get a first name and an email, execute this query, and it goes straight through the Django model association to friends, and it grabs the first name and email of my friends, Adrian and Simon. All right, so the Django developer is happy. This extends to all other uh, Python frameworks.
So let's see if we can do the same for Ruby, and particularly Rails. All right? Here we go. So in Rails, I'm going to use the gem installer, and I'm going to gem install the GraphQL gem. I'm also going to install Rails graphical to avail ourselves of the graphical uh, browser. All right, with that stuff installed, let's go. Second verse, same as the first. I'm going to need to generate a, a schema for GraphQL in Ruby. It's going to look roughly like this. A schema, I'm going to use the GraphQL gem to create a new uh, schema, like so. At the root of all good schemas is a query type. What's in a query type? A query type is a GraphQL object type defined as follows. It has a name, has an optional description, and it has some fields on it. For instance, I might have a person field, which is of type person type. It takes an argument like ID, which is a string, and in order to resolve a person, I need to write some code. Now, here's where I'm going to use Active Record with Rails to pull my people out of the database. Active Record exposes this API, right? I can say person uh, dot find to find a person by their ID. And in this case, I can pull it straight out of args ID. That should be enough to resolve a person. All right, more work to do. What's in person type? Person type is also similarly a GraphQL object. It has a name and an optional description. And it has some fields, like a first name field, which is of type string. Now I'm going to have to do a little bit of extra work. Graphene did some translation between the underscored version of this field and the camel cased version of the field that I have to do manually here. I have to say, the property you want to access this is actually called first underscore name, whereas the field is called first capital N name. Same for last name. And then for the other fields, I'm not going to have to do any of that. I can just say get email, username, and ID. All right, let's deal with the friends field now. So I want to create a field. I want it to be called friends. I want it to be of type, uh, a, an array of these person type things. And in order to resolve this, I'm going to start from a person. And I'm going to use the Rails accessor person.friends to go and grab that out of there. All right, that was a lot of typing and not a lot of running code. <laughs> what do you think? Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to go to localhost 3000 where the Rails app is running. On my schema, I have a person field. It accepts an ID property. And on that, I can access first name, last name, I can get email and a username. And I hope that I can reach into this friends association and do the same and pull out my friends' first names and email. Executing this, I pull out my friend Matt's through the Active Record Association friends. All right. So the Ruby developer is happy. The Python developer is happy. Now I'm going to move over to a language that's near and dear to my heart. We're going to do. We're going to do something or other in JavaScript using Node and Express, right? OK, here we go. Round three. For the JavaScript developer, we're going to npm install um, the GraphQL gem. And then I'm also going to install Express uh, GraphQL, which is a set of helpers that let you stand up a GraphQL endpoint using Express really easily. All right, let's do it. So the node example has pretty much nothing. I'm, I'm, starting from, uh, I'm starting from serious zero here. So 
<clears throat> let's create uh, an index.js. <laughs> All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to import express. I'm going to import um, as GraphQL HTTP. I'm going to install, uh, uh, ex import this from express GraphQL. I'm going to make an app. I'm going to make an express app. I'm going to get that Express app to listen on port uh, 5000, whatever. I'm going to get that app to use this GraphQL HTTP thing. Now I have to pass this GraphQL HTTP thing a schema. And I'm also going to tell it, hey, uh, I'm in dev mode here, so turn on graphical so that we can browse this schema. All right, what is a schema? It's nothing until I define it in the following file which I will create, schema.js. All right. I'm going to have to import a couple of things from the GraphQL module. GraphQL schema, for instance, from the GraphQL NPM module. I want to export uh, one of these new GraphQL schemas, schemae, schemae. Pretty sure it's schemas. At, all great, at the root of all great schemas starts a query type. What's in a query type? A query type is made up of a new GraphQL object type, which I will now import before it's too late. An object is made up of a name and an optional description and some fields which I'm going to define as follows. I want a person field, and I want it to be of type person type. I also want it to take some arguments, namely an ID argument of type GraphQL string, which I will import. And then I need to resolve a person. So I'm going to write a resolve method. Whoops. Now I didn't really think this through, because I started this node example from scratch, and I don't have a data layer here. Um, I started from literally nothing. So where am I going to get data for a person? Well, I want to point out something really remarkable about the resolve method in your average GraphQL schema creation language. Resolve, sure, I can return something that conforms to person type, but I can also return a promise that resolves to something that conforms to person type. This is huge. This opens up the entire world of asynchronous operations to this resolve method. This means that in this resolve method, I could like call the USPS API, and I could like mail a letter somewhere. And <laughs> when I get the response, I could like open it and do stuff. Or I could like call the SMS API and send someone a text message, and then when they text me back, then I could do stuff with the text or something. Um, but I don't know. I don't really have th those aren't really real things. <laughs> um, ooh, but what I could do is I could make some HTTP requests to that Django REST API that we were looking at before. I could use something like the fetch API, and I could hit some uh, you know, base URL, because I, I know where that Django app lives. It lives at localhost 8000. And I could, you know, I, I know how to get a person by ID. I just stick the ID here in, you know, people slash ID. And uh, the ID is going to be available through this args thing. So uh, that looks pretty legit. That should craft a URL um, that hits the Django API. And, you know, then when the response comes back, I can. Uh, parse the response as JSON, and I can, you know, reach into that JSON and and grab the grab the person. So, I don't know, uh, could work, <laughs> especially if I import um, fetch. All right, none of this is going to work at all though without a person type. So, person type is an object type that has a name and an optional description 
and some fields on it. One of the fields is uh, first name. And first name is of type GraphQL string. And I'm going to need to give this thing a little help to resolve it from a person because of that mismatch between um, uh, camel casing and underscoring. So that should, uh, that should do for first name. This should do for last name. And then for the other ones, uh, like email, uh, username, and ID, uh, that should be enough. All right, what are we going to do about this friends thing? So friends is a field of type. It's a GraphQL list of this person type thing. I'm going to import GraphQL list before it's too late. Now, how am I going to resolve my friends? Here's where things get interesting. I have a resolve method. It's going to take in a person. But now what am I going to do? Person has a friends property, but that friends property is just a list of URLs. Well, down there, I have this URL fetching thing. So I wonder if I could maybe reuse that to load the nested friends by URL in the same way. Let's give it a shot. Let me, let me do the right thing and, and hoist this up and maybe create a, a helper method called uh, you know, get person by URL. And get person by URL is going to look something like this. Something like this, where I take the base URL and uh, join it together with a relative URL, pulls out the JSON, returns a person. OK, looks legit so far. Wherever I want to use it, I can use it like this, where I say, um, grab me people slash args ID. All right. And now back to the friend resolver. So I know that person.friends is a list of those URLs. So I should just be able to map over it, calling the get person by URL function each time. That's going to return an array of promises that can go and grab that friend data, supposedly. All right. Well, I don't know. Let's see if it works. But you're not going to be satisfied if it works. You're going to want proof. Let's take a look at those Django server logs. What I should see here is I should see a bunch of requests going into the Django REST API. If I hit localhost 5000 um, graphical, all right, let's give it a shot. It looks like I have a person field. So far, so good. It accepts an ID parameter. And it looks like I have the usual suspects available, like first name, last name, email, username, and a friends field. And I hope that I can pull uh, my user, uh, first name and email from my friends. So if I run this, I get three requests to the Django REST API, and I see my friends Adrian and Simon from the first exercise. All right. Now, you've opened up a completely new world where you can write a schema that hits a REST API, Redis, uh, uh, some kind of crazy asynchronous service, any kind of service-oriented architecture, a Thrift API. You can back that all with a single monolithic GraphQL schema and fetch them asynchronously. Now, some of you have a smirk on your faces because you're thinking about how you can break my example. What if I started querying for the friends of my friends, and the friends of my friends of my friends, and turtles all the way down. Valid query, maybe valid response, but what's going to happen? Whoa! We just, we just slammed that REST API for a whole bunch of duplicate requests. We fetched people three a whole bunch of times, people one a whole bunch of times. That's not good. That's bad. <laughs> so, 
So for this, in the last five minutes that I believe that I have in, gra in zero to GraphQL in 30 minutes, um, I'm going to show you our solution for this that we've open sourced at github.com slash Facebook slash data loader. It's a read through cache that helps you with this use case. And it looks something like this. Jumping back to the index.js, GraphQL HTTP, I'm going to say, OK, listen, when a request comes in, I'm going to return you a configuration object that tells you how to kick off the query, uh, kick off the query to, into the schema. But also, I want you to make available some context for me. And particularly, I want you to give me a couple of loaders that help me load data in a cached way. What does a loader look like? Loaders is going to be a bunch of stuff. For right now, I just have a person loader. What's in a person loader? A person loader is going to be one of these new data loader things. Here's how you configure data loader. You give it a resolver. And the resolver is, is designed as follows. Given an array of keys, return me a promise that returns an array of things. So if I can say, for every one of those keys, map over it and call that get person by URL function. I'm going to pull that over from this file. Get person by URL base URL, et cetera. I'm going to pull that up to here. So now I have get person by URL available. And I'm going to import data loader. Like so. All right. Where? Thanks. Awesome. All right, so in recap, GraphQL is going to receive a request, and it's going to pass a, a schema, GraphQL true, and um, some loaders through this context thing. Loaders is just going to be a hash mapping person to this person loader thing. And person loader is going to be a data loader that knows Given an array of keys, which in our case is just going to be an array of URLs, how to return a promise that resolves all of those things uh, into the data that we're looking for using this get person by URL method. All right, how are we going to make use of that in the schema? So wherever we were fetching before, I was using this get person by URL method that I just uh, evicted from this file. So I'm going to pull these loaders through, and I'm going to use loaders person, load, and pass it that URL. That's the key to data loader. Up here, where I'm saying person friends, I used to be running get person by URL for each. But I should be able to pull uh, forward this loaders thing from the context. And then loaders, person, there's another method that data loader exposes called load many. And since person.friends is already an array of URLs, that should be enough. I should be able to load many URLs using a data loader. All right. Syntax errors willing. Let's see what effect this has. So Django server logs. Going to clear the screen. And I'm going to try and execute this same query and see what happens. We executed the same query. We got the same response. Turtles all the way down, but this time, we only made exactly the number of requests that we needed to the backend API so that we could get the performance characteristics that we needed to be able to wrap an existing REST API using a GraphQL schema in Node and Express without ever tapping our backend developers on the shoulder or asking them for favors. This has been Zero to GraphQL in 30 minutes, also known as Zero to GraphQL three times in roughly 10 minutes. I hope that it's inspired you to try out these principles, to build, your, build a GraphQL schema atop your own infrastructure, atop your own data layer, to expose your universe of data through GraphQL so that you can start playing with technologies like, like Relay.
Uh, we're going to have a question and answer session after, but thanks for your attention. Thanks for sticking with me through that. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Welcome to Facebook, and have a great rest of the day.